Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to tie a great little sculpin or gobi imitation. Now to be honest I'm really not sure who first came up with this pattern but it's called the goblin. Uh, it's a very well thought out fly and it's designed like a clouser minnow with metal eyes on top of the shank so it'll swim with the hook point on top so it won't get snagged on the bottom. And The head of the goblin is made from wool and when that gets wet it helps the fly to sink very fast so it gets down quickly to where the sculpins like to live. And there are several similar patterns on the internet and also in Richard Stoll's Sea Run Cutthroat Trout book and my version is pretty similar to those with just a few changes of material and hook type. So I like to tie this pretty small on a Mustad S74 hook in size 6 and I also use the Gamma Katsu SP11303 uh, and for that hook, a size 8 will give you the same dimensions and profile as the mustad. So my thread is UTC um, 140 in brown olive. And I'm going to tie this on uh, about halfway down the hook shank. And that will define the length of the, the short dub body that I'm going to make. And the most critical part of tying this fly is to leave lots of room at the front for the head and collar and fins which you add. And I'm going to just take this thread to about the start of the bend. And now I'm going to create just a short dubbing loop. And I'll lock that in there at the bend. And then just advance my thread forward. I'm making the body from Senyo's laser dub in olive uh, to match the tail that I'll be adding. Some versions just use hair that you just snip off the same rabbit tip, uh, rabbit strip that you'll tie in for the tail. But for me, uh, the laser dub is just really easy. And also, I think it adds a bit of kind of a fishy glint to the body. Oh, I'm taking quite a big clump of dubbing because I want this body. Uh, to be quite dense and bulky. And I just stretch it out. And once I've got this trapped inside the loop, I'll just spin it up. That looks about right. I'm going to wrap that back to the start of the thread base, halfway along the hook. Making it quite a fat little body. I take my thread back and tie that off with a few turns of my tying thread. And then cut away the excess, like so. For the tail, I've got an olive rabbit zonka strip. And you could use easily one of the black barred variants that you can get. I'm going to stripe mine just with a permanent marker when I've finished. I've already cut a piece here with a tapered end. And I want the tail to extend out beyond the hook bend by about one and a third hook lengths. And I also need to add enough length to cover the body and a couple of extra millimeters just to tie it in in front. I'm going to mark with my fingertips the point at which I need to pierce the tail with the hook and then poke the point through the strip that's got it. And I just got to find a place where I can uh, I can grip this with the vise. Not there. Don't want to trap the fur. Okay. Now I'm going to pull on the front of that strip 
pull it really tight and bind it down very securely with several wraps of thread to lash it in place right in front of the body. That's good. Now I need to add a collar and the purpose of that is, is mainly to support the pectoral fins which I'm going to be adding on later. So I'm going to use a fairly stiff rooster neck haddle, saddle in brown and I pick one out with fairly short fibers about one and a half times the hook gap. And I'll tie that in on my side by the butt and then bend the stem back and tie that down just to lock it in place. Trim away that stem. Now I'm going to take four turns of the hackle keeping it really tight against the front of the body. Just trap that. I'll sweep all the fibers back with my fingers and just wrap my thread back over the base of them a little bit to form a cone like so and just cut off that waste piece I want to get rid of that stray fiber there that's it now I'm going to make a pair of pectoral fins and you can see on the finished fly how they're angled out from the body and they're supported by the collar. So for the fins I've selected a couple of feathers from a brown speckled hen saddle and I've taken them from down here near the base of the saddle and I've stripped everything else, everything except the top one centimeter or so like that and I'm going to tie the first one in so that the natural curvature of the feather is away from the hook and that means that the dull side is nearest to me and I'll just adjust it so it lies straight I'll bring my thread back I'm going to do just the same on the other side Just a quick check that they're lined up how I want. I'll tidy, tidy up the front a little bit. Snip away those stems. Now I'm going to attach a pair of plated brass dumbbell eyes in yellow and black. I think these are real eyes. Lost the package. Uh, and I know I've rotated this out of the camera frame and I apologize but it won't be for long so I hope you can see I'm attaching the eyes with a series of figure eight wraps as one does and I've made sure that I've left enough of a gap in front of those dumbbells about one dumbbell length in front be before you get to the eye of the hook. I hope there's enough of this that you can see. Now I'm just going to make a whip finish right in front of the eyes. Cut that off. And next I'll add 
a, a little coating of super glue onto the threads between the eyes just to make sure they're fixed firmly in place and another dab down below and then I'll leave that to dry for a bit Now I'm changing the thread to Danville's Flymaster in tan. This is a really, really strong thread because I'm going to need to apply a lot of tension when I'm tying in the wool head. So I'll start that right behind the eyes. Now I'm going to take some olive sculpin wool and some cream sculpin wool to make the head. So starting on the same side as the hook point I've got a chunk of wool about an inch and a half long and maybe about the thickness of my little finger. I'm going to center that between the fins and the eyes and make two very tight wraps around it. I'll move my thread in front of the wall and make another two wraps. Move my camera now. Um, now you can see me do the same thing with uh, with a piece of cream sculpting wall on what will become the underside of the fly. I'll brush back both clumps and take two more wraps. I'll take a second clump and tie that in as close to the front of the eyes as I possibly can. Move that back in two wraps. And turning over the fly, I'll take a second bit of olive wool. and tie that right on top, same way as I did before. So finally I'm going to pull all of that back and just complete with three or four more turns. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to take my half hitch tool and just gently pack that and then make a quick half hitch to make sure my thread won't slip off during the next step. So first of all I'm just going to brush out the, all the wool using an old toothbrush. This will get rid of any fluff and combine the strands together. It's Looks good. Now it's very difficult to add a whip finish unless you first trim the front of the head. So I'm going to do that while my tying thread is still attached. I'm going to cut the top in a rounded profile like so. Turn this over and do the same with the underside. Probably just trimming that a little closer than the top. So now I've got enough room, hopefully, to get my whip finish in. Not easy. Impossible unless you trim it first. Right, and, and I'll come in later with a drop of head cement and just clear out the eye of any loose bits of wool in there, but that'll do for now. Now I'll finish shaping that head. 
make it rounded. and just give it a final brush. And there it is, the, sc the goblin sculpin. And to finish it off I'm going to just add some stripes with my permanent marker. There you have the finished article. Hey, thank you for watching, and good luck.